I see.
All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Marley Kejamaza. I will be your host this morning. You are very, very welcome. Thank you for joining us for the Career Essentials series. Um, we shall be having these sessions every Thursday moving forward. This is the first session. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I'd like to welcome Dr. Maggie Chukazi. I see she's on the call. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. We're delighted to have you here this morning. Thank you. All right, you look lovely. All right, thank you people for joining us. We will start shortly. We're waiting for a few more people to come on. And I'm waiting for information from the host on whether the rest of the panelists are here. So in the meantime, what we can do is you can just share in the chat, what are you expecting today? Um, share, just tell us your name and maybe where you work, what business you run or the name of the organization or company that you run with, that you work with. We could start there. Um, let's just engage a little bit in the meantime as we wait for the rest of the people to join us. We are happy that you could join us this morning. Once again, my name is Marie Keisha Maza. So just tell us your name, where you work, what you do, or if you're not working, you know, you've been at home just sitting, hanging out, waiting for the Lord to do some miracles and wonders. <laughs> just share some information with us in the chat. What are you looking forward to today? What are you hoping to learn? I think it will also be useful. It will help me guide the conversation in a certain direction, maybe, or it will help the hosts. Um, it will help the panelists rather understand better what kind of information you're interested in hearing about. So just get busy in the chat. Let me know what kind of things you are looking forward to. So I am just using another gadget here to see. Um, thank you for coming through. Good morning, Okelo Elliot. Thank you for joining us. Bridget Carroll, you are most welcome. Maria Peggy, you are welcome. We are glad to have you all here this morning. Share with us as you join. What's your name? Well, we can see your name really as you put it. But just, yeah, let us know what's your name, what's the name of your business, what's the name of your company, the organization you work for. Let's engage and tell us what kind of things you're expecting today, what you're hoping to hear, what you're hoping to learn. Um, yeah, we'd be interested in hearing that, learning about that. So just share with us in the comments, share with us in the chat. I hope you are familiar with the chat feature.
All right. Good morning once again. Something happened with the network, I think. You are welcome once again this morning. We're happy that you could join us here. Um, just let us know what kind of business you're doing right now, what um, the name of the company is that you work with or what work you do. Maybe you just do, I don't know, events and you don't really have a business as yet, but you're an events planner. Or maybe you are a personal shopper, a personal stylist. Maybe you are. Just let us know what kind of work you do in the comment section. Let's start engaging as we get ourselves ready to start. We are glad that you could join us this morning. My name is Marley Keisha Maza, for those of you that have just joined us. Um, we are happy to have you. All right. We are going to begin shortly. Those of you in the chat section, let's see what's happening there. Good morning, everyone. Otwao Elliot here. I'm particularly excited and anxious to learn how businesses can be relevant and reach out to their customers during this pandemic. Oh, you've even left an email address. Love it. All right. Thank you, Okello Elliot. Thank you for sharing. Um, you can let us know, the rest of you, what are you looking forward to in this session? What are you hoping to learn? And what business are you currently doing or what work are you currently involved in? What kind of things are you doing? Oh, we have our second um, panelist here as well, Mr. Rugendo. Mr. Arinait Rugendo, you are welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you very My much. My name is Marie Kamaza. Yes, thank, thank you. you, Marie. Thank you for the invitation. I'm glad to be here. And um, also, uh, I, um, I say shout out to my auntie, uh, Professor Maggie Chigozi, right there, and the rest of you uh, joining uh, this important discussion. Hey. Awesome, thank you. So we have our panelists here. We have two of them here. We are waiting for the final panelist and then we'll begin. But in the meantime, just keep engaging with us during the chat section. If you have a friend who you know registered and isn't here yet, let them know that we've begun. We're about to begin the session. You know, we don't want them to miss anything because everything we're going to learn here today is going to be super, super important. Um, the host can advise. I don't know if the link is still open for people to register. If it is, you can just invite someone who would be interested or who you think would benefit from today's session. I have Derek Mugabe. Mugabe, sorry. He says, I'm Derek Mugabe, a student and businessman. I really want guidance on choice, business or continuing the education system. Hmm, that's an interesting question. I wonder if you can do both. Uh, yeah, there's a book called Secrets of the Millionaire Mind where he says that um, people with a rich mindset, you think of both. You don't limit yourself to choice, one, this or the other, but I'm not the panelist. So I'll let the panelists speak into that. But um, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing with us your thoughts um, and your expectations. We are delighted that you could share with us and the panelists are taking notes so they will address as much as they can in the time frame that we have. Good morning, Okello Elliot, you've greeted before. Thank you for joining us, Joseph Kakoza. You are a PR to Uganda Funeral Services. Interesting. And I'm very curious to know what that kind of business is like. Very interesting. Thank you for joining us, Joseph Kakoza. Um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, just keep sharing with us, keep engaging with us in the comments. Uh, let us know what kind of work you're doing currently, what kind of business you do. Have you started a business in this lockdown? Has your business sort of fallen apart in this lockdown? What, you know, what is, how is this season working for you? How is it treating you? Or do you need ideas on the kind of things that you could start? Or do you need ideas on how to keep growing? That kind of thing, just share with us. Let's engage, let's get to know each other. Also, you could find a potential client on this page or a potential employee or employer you know, anything on this page. So the more you share, the more opportunity you're getting for yourself. So let us know what kind of things you're expecting to hear today and let us know 
Um, yeah, what kind of business you do? I see that Navimanya Humphrey has joined our final panelist. Good morning, Humphrey. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. We so are much. delighted and happy to have you. Yeah. Yes. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, you can keep sharing with us. In the meantime, Chairman Rugaju, you say good morning, everyone. You're happy to be here. You, you are Frank. Your name is Frank and you are a businessman. Okay. Um, Joseph Kakoza, you shall know more about the best funeral services in Uganda if you're given a chance. We shall have a chance to at the end for a Q&A session. Maybe you can squeeze it in there. Let's see how it goes. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for being a part of us this morning. I think we are just about ready to start really because we have all our panelists in. We have um, quite a bit of quorum, I think, to begin. I know that we're expecting many more people than this, but they will just keep draining us as we go along. Let us, I think, keep moving for the sake of those that did keep time, those that have been able to join us now. I would like to know if Bakash is on the call. Isaac, are you there? So that I can begin my quick introduction and then hand over to you. Let me see. Yes, he's on the call. All right. So thank you guys so much for joining us this morning. You are welcome. This is the Career Essential Series. We will be bringing you business tips, ideas, thoughts, experiences of different people in, the, in different industries and different career spaces in Uganda, maybe even across Africa and across the world. But we'll begin with Uganda because the charity begins at home. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> So thank you for joining us this morning. My name is Marley Keshamaza. I will be your host this morning. I am a public speaker and I am a digital communicator. I do digital influencing and I do um, social media account management and strategy. And I am delighted to be moderating this space today. I'm delighted to be able to take part in this conversation and to help you guys you know, learn and just to facilitate the learning this morning is really what I'll be doing. I think that's my role for this morning. Um, so that's really a little bit about me. If I get into it, we'll spend quite a while here and it's not about me today. So thank you so much for joining us. My name is Marley Maza. We've got a number of panelists here today. We have Mr. Arinaito Lutendo. We have Dr. Maggie Chigozi. We have Humphrey, Mr. Humphrey Abimea. And I'll tell you a little bit more about them a little later. Before we get into it, I'd like to invite Isaac Bakashava to tell us more about Bakash Foundation because we are here courtesy of um, Bakash Foundation, Bakash Media Foundation. And so they're going to tell us, um, they're the ones facilitating these conversations and facilitating all this information. And so I think we should get into learning a little bit more about them and what they do and the purpose behind these conversations that we are having. And then when we are done with that, we can then go ahead and introduce our panelists and get ourselves started with the rest of the information for today. Um, right. Let me see. So if you are ready, Isaac Bakash, you are free to speak. All right. Thank you. Oh, someone's a good communicator. Thank you, Raymond. Thank All right. you so much, Ali. Do you get me clearly? Yes, we can hear you. All right. Good morning. Um, my name is Isaac Wakashawa, team lead and founder of Bakash Media Foundation. I'm delighted for today and I welcome you all here. Today is the launch for our career essential series. Uh, it's a new mode of communication or interaction we came up with due to the fact that we are in a lockdown. Uh, COVID is a health pandemic, but it didn't only affect the health sector, but also it affected other sectors and the education sector inclusive of which our main audience. So uh, we've been running for the last two years. Bakas Media Foundation has been running for the last two years, since 2019. And we recently, last month, that one, we celebrated two years of existence. We might generally do career guidance and mentorship, obviously, and mostly in the higher systems of learning. We've been doing this through carrying out uh, physical dialogues seminars and conferences in high institutions, in universities. Of late, when COVID hit, that was last year, we had sessions, but which were online. We are tackling unemployment through career guidance, and we hope 
You're breaking a little bit, Bakash. You get me now? Mali, do you hear me? You can hear you, Bakash. All right, so, all right, so um, we are tackling unemployment through career guidance, and we hope through sensitization and, and advocacy of career approaches, dynamics, and people making right choices to their careers is the best solution to solve the unemployment that is increasing among your kids in this country. So part of what we do, we introduce skilling to, uh, apart from the advocacy and inviting the panelists to come and speak and encourage and tell their stories to the audience. We recently introduced skilling to what we do. So we are going to go be organizing sessions with the, with the Innovation Village where we are going to skill this youth about with the best skills, with the soft skills that can really help them to start on their careers, to carry on their passion. We understand that the job market is so dynamic and the jobs available are not enough for the overwhelming population of youth. So we hope by empowering our audience with the best approaches, with the capabilities to put on their passion to perfect in what they know to really solve this problem of unemployment. And here we are today, we are introducing career essential series where we are going to be a different personalities, resourceful personnel from different sectors to really tell their story, to guide us on how we can go about this hard time, how we can reinvest our careers, how can we feel ourselves and see that we match with the current situation. So I welcome you all here. I thank our panelists for uh, coming up. It was on a short, a short notice, but I thank you all, Professor Maggi, Mr. Humphrey, Mr. Ajinaita. I think I disturbed each one of you so much for you to make it here, but I'm so delighted that you made it finally. For Mr. Humphrey and uh, Professor Maggi, we hosted them on our fifth career event at Victoria University. And I'm glad that you're back and you're always positive whenever I reach you out. I thank you so much. Um, Mr. Rina Itwe, we will come on board and I hope you're going to be engaging. I know you start a lot of, with a lot of calls and texts at night. The same to Maggie, the same to Mr. Humphrey. I think for Humphrey, I went an extra mile and I really, I needed his response, but I'm delighted that you all responded positively. So it's going to be a marathon. It's going to be a weekly session. Every week, every Thursday, we're going to be here discussing and impacting each other in different career ways. So to our audience today, thank you so much for turning up and we hope to have you always as we move on. And my team, thank you so much for putting this together. I know it's been uh, a tough, tough time. We are home, we can't really meet physically, but uh, I'm so thankful that you came up. We held many online meetings, organized this, put out the concepts, and really see that we reach out to this information to all of you. So without wasting time, I think uh, we can kick start off this discussion and I Mali, take it on. I thank you. All right. Thank you very much for that, Isaac Makashala. Um, I'd like to invite, we're going to do a quick poll session the organizers, Bakash Media Foundation, just have a few questions. So shortly you're going to see a question pop up on your screen. I think it's ready. So if they're just three questions, multiple choice. Um, so all you have to do is tap the correct answer for you, the one that most applies to you. Um, just so we can know and understand you better, it will help us to be able to serve you better in the future events that are coming, because as we mentioned, this is a series. So we just like to know. Um, yeah, a little bit of information about you, your level of education, primary school, high school, university, or other, um, which is okay. 
I hope you don't consider all this to be extremely private information. Um, then when you click the first one, it takes you to the next one like that. If you're using a phone, if you're using a laptop, then you see all of them lined up already. So you just keep going number by number until you're through. The questions are only four. Um, yeah, so the first question, you just want to know what your level of education is. The second question, the career sector that you are in, this is going to help us to guide in terms of the people that will bring on boards that we're not focusing only on one um, sector when there are people from so many different sectors that are interested in this information. Or maybe we might spread ourselves out too wide and yet everyone is sort of from one or two sectors. So this will just give us a bit of guidance as we pick some of the future people that we can bring on board. Have you been to a career guidance event before? We'd like to know if you've attended this kind of thing or if this is your first time, just to better understand you know, the types of people we're dealing with and what your interest may be in terms of career events and things of that sort. Um, yeah, and then the final question is how you got to know about this session. Was it on WhatsApp? Was it on Facebook? Was it on LinkedIn? Was it on Twitter? Was it by SMS? Did you receive an SMS? Was it through email? Or did you hear about it through one of the panelists, one of the people that will be speaking to you today? So any of our panelists or through me um, or other, maybe none of these apply. And there's another way that you heard about this. You can just tick or tap on whichever applies to you. And then we shall know. Thank you once again for joining us. I think everyone is done, or I hope so. I've sort of just we been answering it as I speak to um, gauge how much time it takes. I if you guys are done, you can one. just there are little options, reactions over there. You can just raise your thumb. Once I see just a few people are through, then I'll be able to keep it moving. I just would like to move when we have a few more people. I think it helps. Marie, we are not able to move to number three. You behind. So if you guys are through with the polls, then I will begin wow. with introducing. OK, I see a thumbs up over there. I'd like to see like two or three more thumbs up to know at least a few more other people have finished. We can get into inviting our panelists to speak to us today, which is the reason why we are here. Um, all right, Marley. are you guys still completing the polls? Kesha, I think someone has come. Completing the polls. Marley, someone is not really getting access to Oh, sorry. Um, hi, sorry. Marie, yes. was sorry about I and, um, something had happened to the sound. I forgot to enable. I'm failing to get to the third question if there's one. I've only got one and two. There were four. There were four. Mm. Oh, when you scroll to the end, do you see an option for next? Okay, okay, yes, I've seen it. All right, great. I've got number three now. All right. So we'll just give it maybe one more minute so we can finish answering these questions. And then I'll introduce our panelists for the day and we can begin. I will give it just a minute. In the meantime, you can just keep sharing. Let's keep the chat page active because we have our host watching the chat throughout, throughout this conversation. We have all our panelists on board at the moment. So you can, it, this might help to guide the conversation maybe a little bit. So you can just share with us what your expectations are from this session or some of the things that you're hoping to hear, to learn about, to find out. And we'll see if some of these things can be picked up as we have the conversation. Um, yeah, so just keep engaging with us, keep chatting with us in the chat section. Let us know what you're expecting, what you're hoping to hear today, what you're hoping to learn about the things that you're excited about, what you're looking forward to today, all of that. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for joining us. This is the Career Essential Series. We are on Twitter, by the way, and on Instagram. So if you want to talk about it, if someone says something, you know, these days when people talk, you say, wow, that's tweetable. So if someone says something that's like, oh my gosh, so tweetable, you can just share it on your Twitter with the hashtag Career Essential Series. Um, and the other hashtag is we tell the story. So you can take part in the conversation online like that as well. And you can also follow us on social media at Bakash Media UG. On, that's the same name on Twitter and on Facebook. On Twitter and on Instagram, rather. That's where you can find us. And we're using the hashtags Career Essential Series. And we tell the story. So you can yeah, engage with us online as well while you're on Zoom. You can also keep up with the conversation on the online space. Well, Zoom is online, but on the social media space. 
Um, I think that we are through with the polls. I'm getting word that we are done with the polls from the host. All right. Thank you guys for coming. You are most, most, most welcome. I've said that like 10 times today, but really you are very welcome. We are happy that you could join us this morning. So I'm going to briefly introduce our panelists and then I'll invite them to introduce themselves because they would probably do it a bit better and they can also introduce themselves in the way that they prefer to be introduced. So I'll just tell you a little bit about who our panelists are so you have a better understanding of who we have on board with us this morning. And then I will hand over to the panelists so they can introduce themselves one by one and then we'll be ready to kick off. Um, so the first person we have is Mr. Arinai Tuelujendo. He's a journalist. He has experience of about 20 years in media entrepreneurship. So he's an entrepreneur, but he's really been in the media space particularly. He has written extensively as well. He's written quite a number of articles on so many different topics and disciplines, quite a number on investment and trade, as well as other topics. And he's also currently the CEO of Streamline Consults, which I guess he'll tell us a little bit more about in his, um, in his introduction. We also have Dr. Maggie Chigozi with us. She is a medical doctor by training. She's also a businesswoman and a business consultant, and she's also an educator. Um, and she'll tell us a little bit more about herself and some of the things that she's done or some of, you know, a little bit more about her profile. We also have Mr. Humphrey Navimanya. He is a social entrepreneur. So we have everyone on this panel is an entrepreneur. They do business, either consultation or they do entrepreneurship or some sort of business in some way. So they are speaking to you from an experience point of view. They're not just making stuff up from their head. So we have Mr. Humphrey Navimanya. He is a social entrepreneur. He's a peer educator and he's the founder and team leader of Reach A Hand Uganda. So he will tell us a bit more about himself. So I'd like to ask maybe that they unmute one by one. I think that might help. So I'd like to have Mr. Arunait um, Virujendo, maybe you can go first since you're here and you're ready. And you can tell us a little bit more about yourself. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you, Maria Keshamaza. And- Mari uh, 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 good, good morning, everyone who is uh, who's just joined into this wonderful discussion. I think you really brought it out very well in, in a summary form. I really don't need to waste a lot of time trying to add so many things about me. But most importantly, you asked what is what we do at the Streamline Consults uh, Limited. You know, I have spent about 22 years in journalism, having founded a newspaper and uh, done lots of things. Uh, being a fellow, I'm still a fellow actually of the Archbishop of Desmond Tutu Leadership Program, where we actually encourage these kind of things, these kinds of gatherings, discussions about Africa and the future of Africa. And I'm privileged to be one of the few people who, on the continent, who are uh, fellow, fellows of that institute. But most importantly, at the Streamline, we are trying to engage into to engage in um, in uh, what we call uh, impact or solutions journalism. Journalism that impacts, journalism that gives uh, a solution. And we quietly found it, quietly find it. And we, we, we're trying to, to, to see how we can create communication around what's happening in this sphere of innovations in this country, in uh, science, cause that um, the future of Uganda is in technology and, and of course science. And I'm going to be more elaborate about it as we go ahead. Otherwise, that's what I can say. Except that I'm a student, so don't be intimidated by what, by what, you, see, what, what you see in the background. I'm just speaking from Macquarie University right now, where I'm pursuing my PhD in journalism and communication. But importantly, I am investigating what these new technologies are doing to media or traditional media in this, in, in, in this aspect. And it's quite interesting what I'm finding out. Very, very interesting. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Arinaitwe. I'd like to ask Dr. Maggie Chigozi, you can now just unmute yourself and then give us a brief introduction about yourself. Thank you very much, Mari. 
I am happy to be here with uh, so many young people. Some of my favorites like uh, Humphrey and um, Rujendo there um, who are making, you know, waves, who are making change. Uh, and yet they are still so young. So I'm happy to be with you. Yes, uh, I was introduced. So yes, I'm an entrepreneur. You love my product, I know. You drink Pepsi, Mountain Dew, Miranda. That's what we produce. I'm also a farmer and a tree, a tree grower. I'm happy to be here talking uh, um, career. And why do I say that? Because I've been able to move from one career to the other. And the message I bring to you is your education does not limit you. Uh, no, nothing should limit you, actually. It is always possible to change. So yes, I am. Um, uh, I am a medical doctor. And yes, I did work for 17 years. So don't blow me away. Many people get very, very annoyed. You are a whole doctor and here you do other things. But yes, I treated thousands and thousands of people in the seven years, 17 years that I worked. I had to move to the private sector when my husband passed. So yes, I've been with Pepsi now for 27 years. We are growing. Uh, you are supporting us, and that's great. Uh, but uh, I'm also now a farmer, growing coffee, eggs, and uh, matoke, and mangoes, and trees. I love trees. Please plant some trees, whether it's at home, whether it's one tree, whether it's uh, 200 trees, please, please plant some more trees. And uh, I was a sportswoman. That always helps. The networks are wonderful uh, that you met during your sporting career. And I am a mother, so yes, that is me, Marie, and I will stop there. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Maggie Chigozi. I would like to invite the last panelist to introduce himself, Mr. Humphrey um, Nabimanya. I keep saying Nabimanya, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. Humphrey Nabimanya, you could just tell us a little bit about yourself, then we will be ready to begin. Ah, yes, thank you so much. Uh, it's nice seeing all of you, uh, especially uh, my mother, Maggie Chigozi, and uh, my brother, Rujendo. Uh, being on the same panel is quite a very huge privilege as well. It's more of a learning process on a daily basis. Uh, my name is Humphrey Naivmanya. I'm the CEO and uh, founder of Richer Hand Uganda, an organization that we started while at campus first year, and we have seen it grow over time, but also with the support of very many people uh, especially uh, Dr. Maggie Chigozi, who has been with us for over seven years, supporting the kind of work that we do to enrich our cause and our calling to different young people in our line of working. Um, so I'm here to really share a lot uh, in terms of uh, what we can do as young people in different spaces, uh, what kind of career choices we can make. But uh, Rahu is a youth organization that is focusing on HIV and sexual productive health uh, plus youth empowerment in different sectors. Um, and also what we do is to really uh, provide quality services and information to young people across the country. We started working in one district in Kampala and now we are working in 52 districts across the country where our programs and built up a youth network, which we call a youth movement of young people that are creating change in their different societies. And every year we work with over 748 young people that we work with on a, local, on, a, on, on, a, on a district level that enrich uh, to their societies in terms of creating change. So yeah, so I'm here to really uh, interact with many of you and uh, get to know each other, ask as many questions, and as well would love to really learn from you on how we can also better our programming and better our initiatives, especially uh, Rujendo is doing a very good research in terms of uh, how does technology influence media? And also looking at Trisha Hand, we have a huge background on how we are using media and technology to reach young people. So yeah, so I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, Marie, you're on mute. Marie, you're Sorry. on mute. Yeah. Thank you. I am unmuted. All right. So I think we can get ourselves ready to begin the conversation. Um, so I will begin by addressing a general question to the panelists and then whoever would like to go first, I guess can go first and then we'll just sort of spin it off from there. So the theme for today's um, session 
veteran is reinventing career in the midst of a crisis or in the midst of you know lockdown this season that we are in and so what i'd like to ask is do any of you have a story or a practical tip example something that you can share with us of something maybe that you were able to do within your businesses within the companies where you work within your teams either in the first lockdown you know down in 2020 or in this lockdown but just practical things that you did to re-strategize to be able to just keep it moving so that you were not in a place where you're stagnant or moving back. So I just like to hear practical things maybe that one of you did, each of you did in your businesses or in the areas where you work to be able to avoid a hard hit, if we can call it that, re-strategizing and to just sort of, yeah, cover yourselves. I don't know who would like to go first, but this is a general question to our panelists. Uh, Marie, let me mm. go first. Um, I, uh, of course, we, All right. we, in, in manufacturing, we have big challenges. The challenge was really huge uh, at the first lockdown. And, but we are happy we got that one before this one. We were a lot more ready for the second one when it happened. So yes, we found we had to accommodate mm. our staff. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. We found we had to accommodate our staff. So we had an indoor parking. We had to make it into some kind of dormitory. Luckily, most of the production staff are all men. Um, then the others could work at home online. And we've been able to, you know, get um, sell our product online. Com uh, partners, partnerships are so important. A partnership between, you know, the board management and the staff was really critical for us to say this is our company. We are not going to let it go down. We are not. So we work together and yes, we've been able to put up a new factory and we've been able to move and still be able to sell. Uh, maybe not as much as usual, especially in Kampala, but up country has been very, very similar. On the farm, my first thought, especially when I saw them giving out food, was my Ugandans are going to starve. So my first thought was, of course, by phone, telephone farmers now picked up the phone and asked uh, my manager, any piece of land that's empty, put in Lumonde, put in Muwogo, put in Matoke, my Ugandans must eat and also uh, look after the chicken so that we, we continue to provide eggs. So those were some of the few things that we were able to do at our level. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, um, what I'm hearing is that you were sort of also able to move quickly and think ahead. Like for example, with the farming, you thought that, okay, people could possibly starve. So since there's land available, let's open it up. Let's plant something so that we sort of prevent the crisis before it happens or before it escalates. Um, all right, I'd like to hear from Mr. Rugendo or Mr. Nabimanya, whoever um, would like to go first. Okay, let me go first, let me go second. Right. Um, seniority, I think, <laughs> very important. I Thank you very much. I think uh, uh, if you are talking about crisis, the COVID-19 crisis, I think the media, the print media was probably hit most because you're talking about people who who have to touch a newspaper physically and and you know that exchange it's the same crisis the same problem that that you see money you know physical money to, to transmit uh, the, the, the virus between different people it's just basically the same the same um, the same uh, method and so therefore they, 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 there was this challenge about how people would trust no physical newspapers in terms of how they are, they, are, they, are, they are able to protect them or, or even expose them to the virus. And so quickly we moved to adopting new technologies of delivering these newspapers to, to the different people, to your phones. And uh, at, at, in my place, for example, we, 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 we quickly, we had initially actually not bothered about uh, going I mean, upgrading uh, the newspaper to uh, to, uh, to 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 an e in electrical an electronic uh, electronic version, and but eventually we went there and we see now numbers. We see numbers coming in. People are able to buy and read their newspaper offline, 
and and also in terms of now dealing with our clients clients like Pepsi right there mortgage goes and others uh, you know you know adopting to to, 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 to to electronic advertising and this is what we are seeing and but what what is what has been most important was that was that we we've been able to learn that problems really force innovations you know uh, once you have a crisis you must either adapt or or be decimated. If you do not, then uh, the crisis will take you out. And if it takes you out, you're no more. And so therefore, we the, the, the message really here is that uh, the ability to, 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 to take the, to look at the brighter side of the crisis and and take advantage of the opportunities that the crisis, crisis gives or brings about. Like as probably as we'll be talk, discussing much, much later, you will notice that uh, the COVID pandemic has really propelled uh, uh, the adoption of digital technologies. And I've just been reading a report because when um, when I was asked to do something, I, I, I did. I tried to do some kind of quick reading, and I'm shocked to find that the uh, I'm shocked to find that even the World Bank report, just the latest, basically, I'll, I'll give you the links for everybody here to go and read. The, the, the report is clear. It's, it, is, it is urging African countries, especially in the sub-Saharan sub region, some sub-Saharan African region, to make use of the opportunities that are being brought about by digital technologies and get the young people to adapt. And I'll be very, very glad to share that information. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, you said something about innovation. What you did was you started to innovate and see, okay, now this thing is not going to work. How can we change that? So that something else works differently. Just being able to stop and innovate and maybe create something new so that you're able to still continue thriving. And then you said that problems force innovation, crisis enforces innovation, something along those lines. I think that's treatable. Um, and so that's, yeah, one of the things that's now going through my head is that when even when crisis comes, all it should do is just enforce innovation. It shouldn't mean the end of the road. Thank you very much for that. Um, Humphrey, you, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the question as well, please. Yeah, um, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Marie. Um, the crisis really has taught us so many things. And uh, one of the things that it has taught us uh, and also showed us is that we are all innovators in one way or the other. And sometimes when we are creating innovations is to address solutions, but also sometimes we never anticipate what the future really holds. So once the, the first pandemic, when it really happened, unfortunately me, I was locked up in the US, but working into the social entrepreneurship sector or the NGO sector, it is a sector that sometimes it is so slow on innovations. And I think uh, this uh, Dr. Maggie and, uh, and, and uh, Mr. Ojendo can really testify to that because innovations that young people really bring on board are not really looked at as a priority. Uh, for example, we looked at uh, digital communication coming up and how many organizations have been really adopting to that are really quite very few in that the investment they make into that sector is quite really limited. And what we're used in terms of uh, implementing or doing our business is basically community interventions, which are more of face-to-face -face interventions. Now COVID comes whereby you find that all NGOs have to go now on the innovations that they've not really been investing in. One, like Zoom, for example, most workshops, most conferences are now taking place on Zoom. And now very many of our counterparts have invested in money to teach people how to use Zoom, especially their staff members. Um, another intervention is more of using social media and also their different properties they have on board in terms of communicating and sending out their messages and also implementing their interventions. So which was very hard, you know, for the NGO sector, especially the humanitarian organizations to really adopt because the interventions that have been really used to them 
are more of uh, interpersonal interventions, community mobilization, outreach programs, school programs, and so many those and that. And also we see some of this has really affected the education sector, that majority of our schools have been using the traditional ways of reaching out or teaching the young people, but now the pandemic happens and they have to divert online. And many of our teachers and beloved um, uh, schools that we, we come from, these are some of the interventions that they've never you know, um, adopted themselves to or maybe get acquainted to. So the, the, the COVID pandemic for me, uh, it has brought a new change of doing business, a new way of doing things. But likely at Richard Hand, the first, the first one were not that ready, but at least we were 70% ready. Not ready for the, for the pandemic, but we started creating innovations for young people. For example, embracing the digital communication in terms of how do we reach out to young people through their smartphones by creating an application in 2017 that we call the Saudi Plus app that has over uh, 58 downloads as we speak right now, targeting young people, um, but also innovating websites that can really be able to communicate uh, sexual productive health information to young people uh, by also involving ourselves in creating um, a TV series like Chandala that we saw running on different uh, TV stations uh, from 2019 up to now that is still running uh, by you know use of different platforms, use of uh, cultural icons, uh, uh, musicians and comedians that have been able to create content that speak to young people. But we are doing all this more like social media digital, like social media campaigns. But now with the pandemic, it kind of embraced so much of our work and we moved from 70% to 100%. So when the pandemic happened, we're like, okay, we've been reaching out to young people in the rural communities. So how are we able to reach to them yet they don't have a smartphone? So we immediately created a USSD code that we can be able to disseminate information to young people without smartphones. So those are kind of the new innovations that we had. All right, so now we are not able to do school outreaches. How are we able to reach out to the young people back at home? We immediately created um, online concerts, online interventions, online motivational talks, uh, getting in partnerships, the way uh, Dr. Maggie emphasized that partnership is very important within the company, but also outside the company. Our media partners really came on board and embraced our interventions. But these are the, some of the, inter, uh, the, the, the partnerships that even we had, but looking in terms of publicity, not looking in terms of disseminating our information. So now we created some of those programs to make sure that young people can be able to access richer hand to wherever they are on their smartphones, on TV, on social media, on, uh, on, on all different platforms. So we're able to do that and also continue doing our, our on, -ground, uh, on ground activities. As I told you that richer hand every year we work with 748 young people across the country, but also those are young people, those are the champions that are able to speak the language that different young people understand. And also looking that they had a huge influx of, of, uh, of young people coming back at home. So they were their services were needed as frontliners to continue disseminating our information, to continue linking up uh, young people with different services, with the different health facilities they are working in. So that work also had to really continue. But what it comes on is that most people are really worried in terms of the unemployment. And you know, understand that most companies were closing, uh, most companies couldn't really afford, there were so many of salary cuts and so many things like that. But Richard Han, when we started web back, of course, with a lot of guidance from people that are mentoring us, for us, the kind of work we do, it's a human-centered, uh, it has a human-centered approach design, in that all of us are at the center of implementing that work. So invest, investing in human capital is one of the most important parts that everyone should really partake. So when the first pandemic really uh, happened, of course, we we're also really scared, but we had started you know, saving you know, for anything that might really happen, not understanding that COVID would really happen, but we were so proud to say that we, may, we were able to maintain our programs running, we were able to maintain our staff, we were even able to create more opportunities you know, for other young people that we we're working with you know, in different districts. Of course, now the second wave coming, it is known that it has come when we're not really prepared. We have been even prepared enough 
and even uh, reinvented uh, COVID awareness programs that we launched last week with the uh, Rotary, with different Rotary clubs around Kampala to engage our young people to disseminate information and create awareness around SOPs. We are looking at the issues of vaccine being also an issue whereby we're having wrong attitude around towards vaccine. But how do we have our frontliners, especially our young people, preach to their fellow young people to have a proper attitude around you know, vaccine, but also to engage our different interventions as well to integrate COVID messages within what we are doing. So for me, I believe that we are the innovators. If you find, if you, for example, if you see the Crown Privilege uh, where Dr. Magich Gozi you know, works, they keep innovating for their markets. Innovating for their markets, not because they are anticipating a pandemic or they're anticipating a problem to happen in future, but they're, in, they're innovating for you, the young people that are consuming the, the Pepsi products. And that's why if they have one bottle that is getting used on the market, they're going to bring a different shape of a bottle because it's your attitude they are capturing. So they're innovating. So it's, 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 it's us that the ideas that we have are the solutions of tomorrow's pandemics that we're going to be facing. The ideas we have are the innovations that we are looking at. We are now looking at technology rising up. In the pandemic, many people have gone down, but in the pandemic, many people have made money. And those who have made money are the ones that innovated way back before. You know, the Jumias, uh, the, the Amazons, uh, you know, the online market, the technology, it has gone up. And those who didn't innovate, they have sunk. So the innovation that we have, we have to keep protesting them and putting them on, 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 on the plates so that other people can even build more onto them. So that's what I really have to say on this issue. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you so much for that, Humphrey. Um, wow, there's so much happening here. You guys are sharing so many useful and helpful nuggets. So thank you so much for that. Um, I want to point to, first of all, Humphrey, you said that unfortunately the last lockdown caught you in the US. There are a few people who may not term unfortunately and the US together because there's this whole syndrome of I want to go outside countries. But anyway, um, moving on swiftly. Um, some of the things that you mentioned and some of the things that you spoke about and for some people, that would be like a dream to be locked away somewhere that's not Uganda. So some of the things that I think that all of you as the panelists keep, something that keeps coming up is that innovation is very important and also the ability to think on your feet. You need to be able to think quickly and just keep things moving so that the moment something happens that you hadn't predicted and hadn't anticipated, you ask yourself, how can we move quickly? So one of the things that you've said that has stood out for me is that you need to be able to address solutions. So you asked yourself, what is the problem? And then you've thought about the problem first and then asked yourself how you could address it um, immediately. So like you came up with a USSD code so that you can be able to reach the people that are in rural areas or you know just areas, people that are not able to have access to technology and let's say phone applications and all of that. So it's just the issue of addressing the particular problem as opposed to thinking, focusing on the crisis, like look at each problem that there is, look at the things that are going on and then address those specifically. So thank you for that. Um, there has been so much wisdom shared here. And so I think people have been able to learn something in terms of how you can prepare yourself. I think the main thing that I'm hearing is that there is preparation involved and also just being able to think quickly. That's how you can sort of enable yourself to set yourself up to thrive in a crisis because to date it's COVID-19, tomorrow it could be something else. Nobody saw COVID coming. So there could be something else. Any sort of crisis could come up again. Of course, we hope that nothing this bad or this big comes up, but these are some of the things that are a bit unavoidable in life. So now in my head, what I'm thinking of, the question I'd like to address, I don't know if you can help me with that, is that so all these things are good and all these things are helpful for a person in business or a person working. But now let's look at the example of a person who has already failed, if we can call it that. They didn't have this information. They didn't have you know, the wisdom to think ahead and get on their feet quickly. Or maybe some of the situations were a little different for them. And so now maybe they've already, quote unquote, hit rock bottom. Things have already sort of happened. Maybe the business has already failed or the business is now registering losses 
or they've lost their job or that kind of thing, what kind of things do you think that a person like that can do to get themselves back up? Because we can't sit around and cry about it forever because yes, it's a sad thing and it has happened, but like, okay, now I've cried. I feel sad. Ah, it's a tragedy. How do I get myself back up from that point to be able to move forward? And just how do I re-innovate because I'm not working with something maybe that's already existing, like the failure has already happened. The thing has fallen apart. How do I then get myself out of that situation. I'd like to hear some of the things that come to your mind when you think of that. Um, maybe we could start with Dr. Maggie again. That is a very difficult question because uh, we are all so very different. You could be talking about, you know, a big company. You could be talking about civil society. Like you could be talking about a farmer, a small, you know, we, the market woman, for example, they were so badly affected uh, both previously and this time. So it is, the response would be different uh, for each person. But uh, I think uh, the Baganda have the best word, which is Lemerako. Lemerako, you've got to keep uh, running. Um, how you're failing to sell maybe, how can you get to your market differently? Uh, do they need your things? Because uh, challenges have really faced people who um, do say, weddings and uh, parties and who do shows, the creative industry, uh, film, we can't go to the cinema and watch films. Um, if you're in fashion, you make clothes, beautiful clothes, but I have no wedding, I have no office to go to, I am here in my slippers all day long. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not likely to say, let me go buy a new dress. I have nowhere to wear it. I can't even come to you, so that's enough. So yes, that those types of people have really been very, very badly hurt. Um, the first thing, if you have a loan, is to talk to your banker. Put, let your banker understand your situation. If you have a loan, don't run away, don't disappear. They will find you. So talk to your banker. They understand. And Bank of Uganda has been very uh, understanding, actually. They are not usually that understanding. So if you do have a loan, on your business, on your house, on something, uh, talk to your banker and uh, tell them, you know, I will do my best immediately after the lockdown. And they, they, they are trying to understand the bankers are being, you know, uh, a little less um, demanding as they would normally be. Uh, the other one is, is, can you diversify? Is there something else you can do uh, you had, Rujenda went on to, uh, you know, uh, an online uh, thing. Uh, so did uh, Humphrey. Uh, so did we, when it came to marketing, we had to go online. And so is it possible? Would uh, people now, the good thing is young people are very, they're online all the time. If they can be, if they can afford data and they have the, the smartphone, they're online all the time. So it is an opportunity. How do you change, turn around your business so that it is online? And I think the three of us uh, did show you how we did that. Uh, how do you produce something else? We were listening last night to Mr. Just Beddy of Fine Spinners. He took our cotton, local cotton, produced in Kasese, best cotton. He said best cotton in the world. Only Egypt has better cotton than us. And yet we have been exporting it as raw cotton. He makes shirts, clothes, everything very beautiful. But he was able also to move to PPE, producing, you know, for the doctors and producing the masks. There are a lot of the masks that were given by government of Uganda were bought from our own cotton, coming from our cotton, but also made locally by a Kenyan investor uh, who was able now to, to turn around his business because you don't need the fashionable t-shirt now. You are not likely to buy one, 
but definitely the doctors need this, the, the, the masks are needed everywhere. Uh, so he was able to, to, to look at the, the problem and diversify into something else, as did many Ugandans. I am really proud of our Ugandans. Um, you know, yes, many have problems. People still need to eat. Maybe what they are eating. Uh, those who have tomatoes are delivering. I know my friend Sandra, she calls herself slave farmer. She delivers my tomatoes right here. And uh, I'm able to even give Navio some. So, um, you know, fish, Grana brings fish right here to the gate. Um, so people have been able to, to move to the customer. The customer no longer comes to you, you go to the customer. And then also to diversify. I think I'll stop there. Those are two options. And the online, of course, uh, those would be three. All right, thank you very much for that. Um, maybe we can switch it up. Humphrey can go next and then our night will end. Okay. Yeah, um, thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Mag has really elaborated more and I might not really defer so much to that. Uh, as also I started my first statement is that uh, us in the civil society space, uh, there were so many innovations and interventions that we never really gave keen eye. And once all this really happened, uh, many of our interventions were meaningless. So they couldn't really add up to one or the other. And uh, dealing in a business of uh, where you have to write proposals and make work plans, you know, we had a lot of partners coming back to us of like, hey, we, give, we, gave, you, we gave you our money. So what new interventions can you really bring on board? So we had to really revise work plans, proposals to bring in interventions that we think can really work. But it was just even a thought. It's not that these are interventions that we have done and implemented and tested that they can really work for young people. But you find that so many people, like I'm talking about not reach a hand, but so many uh, organizations into our space were just proposing for just doing, but not doing in terms of creating impact in the kind of uh, work they're doing. But just because you know things have hit, we all have to survive. So what can we really do in order to have this money spent? So that's what really happened. And uh, it was really a huge effect in that uh, sometimes people are used on doing something. So meaning that uh, professionals have to come in and replace your jobs because there are people that understand online, online marketing, online, uh, online design, designing campaigns and all that. And yet me as a project officer who's been getting per DM and getting in the field on a daily basis and working with young people, my job is cut off. You know, so those are some of uh, the challenges that were really hit into the sector that are really working. And also, it also was another lesson for many people. Now we have seen that we're getting to phase of uh, soliciting for partners and donors. You find that now ideas are carrying a lot of innovations which is also an opportunity that has really created uh, for different civil societies to start doing work, not as usual, but also work that can also as well target, uh, create impact into uh, our young people's space, but also target the beneficiaries that can really be able to, uh, to, to, to benefit from the work that different people are really doing. So for me, that's what I really have to say about that. Thank you. Right, thank you very much for that. Um, Ari Naitwe, can we hear your thoughts on that? If you have anything you'd like to add? Yeah, th thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I really don't differ from the two previous uh, co-panelists. It's, it's indeed a very difficult question. Why is it difficult? Because you, I can't tell who is where, <laughs> because everyone has got their own challenges depending on uh, what they're doing. But you see, I think, in a COVID pandemic situation like this, I think for me, what is critical first and foremost is life. Are you able to live? That's the most important thing. Are you respecting the SOPs? Are you really fighting this COVID, I mean, this virus away from you? That's very, very important to, to know that. Because I, I need to tell the young people, 
mainly because I think that's what I'm assuming. Most people here are very young, younger than me at least for, for now, that uh, I, I want to compare co this COVID crisis to the AIDS pandemic that came at a time when we were young as well. By the time uh, AIDS was really at its peak around 1989, I was in primary seven. And, and you know, and throughout that uh, first part of senior one, you know, the situation was really scary. And, 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 and we were told that, you know, it, it is going to be very important to learn to live with this pandemic. And we have lived with AIDS. And now you realize that uh, probably in 2030, probably I think Uganda might declare an AIDS free country. So you can imagine how have we learned to live with it and what opportunities have come with it, what problems and challenges have come with it and, and how did people innovate around it. So I would, I would, I would much first of all emphasize life. And then secondly, uh, the, 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 you people and myself, of course, maybe apart from my auntie right there, are living in an age that is actually giving lots of opportunities that you can never imagine. And, and, and that, that people like Professor Magic was probably never imagined. If, if you look at how, for example, they crafted around an idea uh, like Pepsi, and, and, and other uh, businesses that they started ar around that time, you know, there were, they, they, they were no opportunities. There, there was no communication. You know, you you'd write a letter and it, it, it takes so many years to, before somebody responds. But now the, 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 the world with all the opportunities that are available via the digital economy is in your hands. It's just right on your phone. You just need data and you go to Google and ask certain questions and the questions will be answered immediately and you'll be able even to to to, to benchmark from the best that have probably gone through your, your, your similar situation i usually tell the people i talk to that that for me in i, I always believe that a, a problem shared is a problem half solved uh, so if if we have peers that are, are around here for example maybe people share share how share their the experiences how did you sort of yours, and, so, so, and what, what tricks did you use? Who did you contact? Huh? I, I also have this philosophy that, you know, if you don't have anyone you know, you must create people that you know. You must create the contacts. How many contacts do you have in your enclave? How many in, in, your, in, in your peer group? Who do you know? Who can you, who is at your beck and call? Can you easily call Professor Maggie and she gives you uh, an ear, for example, you know, and, and then ask, how did you solve this? How, what can I learn from them? I think the challenge has been that most people want to really suffer with, in their own enclaves, suffer with their own problems and they fear to share out because if they share out, share out, then they will be ostracized. Then they will be told, you know, you are a failure. And people fear, people fear failure, you know, and disappointment because if you, you, you went out, probably you will resign the job and you were, you were this radical and you say, I'm going to start this because I believe in it and it's going to happen and it's going to work. And then it failed and you don't want to own up to the failure and share out and be able to, 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 to learn from it and, and hear from people who have solved this, some of these challenges. I, I think for me, those, these are some of the things we can do. We can take advantage of this and, uh, and, and, and uh, of the, especially of the digital economy that has, that has come upon us and the opportunities that, 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 that are available. And then I think ultimately is to learn that problems, once they have happened, are there to be solved. That's what it means. You know, uh, when, I was, when I was starting Red Pepper uh, with my colleagues, I was very young, about 22 years. You know, radical, I didn't want to hear anything like a job, you know, because we were hearing, we were listening to speeches from people like President Museveni, you, you know, go and create your own jobs, you finished campus, you know, you know, job creation was you know, like the in thing around that time in 2000. And then, you know, uh, uh, but I went and asked somebody, he's a senior lawyer in Uganda, uh, is not yet retired. He's called uh, Ngarie. He, he has, he's, he's, he's got a big law firm in, in, in Barara. And this is what he told me. I've never forgotten. I told him, uh, you are running your own, uh, ask him, you're running your own um, law firm. You, 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 you're not working with the judiciary. Uh, you know, what, what made you, you know, go out of your way to do this and, 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 and be your, yourself? Because I never used to fear speaking to people who are older than me and, and kind of learn from them. And, and that's what young people these days don't do. And, 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 and when Bakash asked me to come here and talk, 
I really, I was very interested because, because that's what we used to do when we were your age, you guys. You know, you bump into an older person like Butatule, anyone else, you just ask questions. You say, how did you do it? I want to know. Uh, and, and people will be willing to tell you. So, so this lawyer told me, Rigendo, go and I was working at the month, I just joined the month, I was just there about six months. He said, go and create a problem. Because I can see you are dilly-dallying, you don't want to start. Go and create a problem and look for the solution of that particular problem that you created yourself. So what was the problem? So, 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 so what problem can I, can I create? And he says, what are you doing at the moment? Go and resign. When you resign and you look for something to eat and you can't find it, and, the, and you cannot find your rent. <laughs> and then you realize, oh, I must spend sleepless nights to create, to create the, 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 the solution. So, so ultimately the point I want to make here is get out of that comfort zone, understand that this virus, virus is a problem and we have come, to, we have come to, to, to learn it and to, to live with it. And so get out of the comfort zone and, and, and then look for that solution. Where are the problems? Can you identify where the problems are? Are people eating? How are people are supposed to be eating, for example, during the pandemic? Who can deliver their food? How do you deliver it? Can you use your space, for example? Because right now, social media has created spaces for everyone. Everybody is a newspaper, you know, on their own. You know, if you have 10,000 followers, like you, Kaishamaza, you know, you mean you, you have more readers than the little paper. <laughs> do, do, do you understand what I'm talking about? So, what are you using that space for? Are you using it to model and show how your hair looks like? What are you doing with that space? So, these are some of the things, guys. And, 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 and I insist. We are living in better times, despite this crisis, we are living in better times of technology. The internet age is bringing so many opportunities that we can recreate, reinvent, copy and paste, and even use, 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 use our own influences to create wealth around ourselves as we navigate through these murky waters of the, of the crisis to be able to get back to normal. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I'd like us to now get into wrapping up before we introduce, before we open it up to the um, public, to audience to share their questions. So I'm going to ask that we each take five minutes to the panelists to answer the next question. Um, if you have something to share. I feel like we focus so much on the problems and dealing with crisis, blah, 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 and all of that. So let's shift gear as we close to just think a bit positively now and look at the brighter side. I see that there are so many opportunities as well that have come out as a result of this pandemic. For example, we have seen more than ever the, 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 agri the, use, the importance of agriculture and the animal industry to a country like Uganda, because for us, that's I think one of our competitive advantages as a country. I needed something that really had it focused on. And so, you know, the pandemic has sort of created awareness in our minds of how important those two industries are. I mean, many of the people in agriculture even get access to a sticker, you can move around in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> so it's a very important industry. And then we've also seen how IT and communication have been revolutionized because Zoom, for example, I personally didn't know about Zoom until the 2020 lockdown. And I know many people, it was the same thing. So IT communication has sort of been simplified and made easier as well as a result of this pandemic. So I just like to ask you, we can just talk a bit about that in five, five, five minutes. What do each of you think are some of the opportunities that we can take advantage of as we come out of the lockdown or even still as we're in the middle of this lockdown because nobody knows this 42 days, does it end, does it stop? We don't really know. But so as we're in the lockdown and as we're preparing to get ourselves out and look at life afterwards, if you could just share maybe one, what you think is one major opportunity that we could all look forward to in the workspace, in the business space. Um, if you could take five minutes or less and then we'll open it up to the public for questions. Uh, thank you so much. I think I'll go first on that. Um, there are so many things that uh, young people have to look for uh, during this lockdown. And uh, for me, what I really see uh, is an opportunity for us to enhance our skills uh, there are things that uh, we have always been looked at, like uh, known things that we should really concentrate on, but I believe that young people should really look at that. For example, 
uh, I have a few young people that I support from my village. And when lockdown really happened, you know, I had to divide my, my land that my father gave me and I gave each of them land to dig. And right now, as I speak, they have uh, they cultivated about eight bags of beans on which we are looking for customers for them. And that's an innovation wow. that has been uh, also handed over my our banana plantations to them so that they can be able to uh, look after them, look after, look after, look after. and then be able to, uh, you know, for them to collect their school fees. And I believe when, when schools really open up, it is not a bother that us as a family are going to really face so much because the young people have been able to innovate. The young girls have really gone into making baskets, uh, making uh, liquid soap. They have started learning these things. And now for us, we even have access to internet with so much skilling that is ongoing. Maybe it's high time you also start teaching yourself. Um, myself, I didn't really started to be a team leader or a CEO, at least Dr. Magic goes has seen me grow. But this has been a self-taught kind of skill that I've really enhanced over time. And so during lockdown, instead of spending our time, you know, gossiping and doing whatever, I think it's high time that we can get something more innovative to recreate. When you look at the current technology platforms, they have created all platforms that you can create anything at all times. You can be self-taught at all times. And I feel like this is an opportunity for us to go down on that drawing board. You can be able to create something that can also be able to make you survive tomorrow. I went to school for over eight years. And, and, and also going to school, I gained knowledge, I gained exposure. Yes, my skills were enhanced but also the knowledge that sometimes I'm feeding on is the knowledge that I got outside of school. A knowledge of uh, being a hustler and a good hustler and knowledge of being able that I'm able to survive in different communities and different spaces. So those are some of the, this is an opportunity for us to enhance more of that. Do a lot of reading, you know, enhance your capacity to understand different things. We're having platforms like TikTok to YouTube to whatever. You want to be a journalist. It is high time now you start creating stories in your community and you're able to send them over. It's high time for you to start looking out for opportunities to where you can be able to place yourself. So for me, this is a kind of an opportunity that, uh, that I see that we as young people can really start doing. I started up Richer Hand Uganda not after finishing campus and getting a, a degree in community psychology, but also when I started my first year at campus, I knew there was a problem. Information gap was a problem. In our class, we were studying, we were studying issues on communication skills, life skills, uh, human sexuality. So we had to transform that knowledge in creating a solution for other young people in schools. And that's how Richard Hand started at 40,000 shillings. Known that we had a lot of capital to start up Richard Hand, but it was us as friends that really started up something without not looking at money, but now you can see where the organization is right now as we speak. So it is more of you getting out of the box. Sometimes hard challenges create solutions, but also they open as many doors as possible. So for me, that's what, what I would really encourage everyone to really start doing and also start looking at. And if you're already doing, then it's high time as well. You look out for mentors, you look out for more opportunities to enhance on what you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Humphrey. Um, would like to go next. Very nice to you, Maggie. Dr. Maggie. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Oh, can I go? Yes, please go ahead. Ah, yes, go okay. ahead. Thank you very much. I agree with my brother and uh, very, really inspiring person, Humphrey Nagmanya, with the with the issue of enhancement. You know, you know. Um, the, the, I think the, to, be, to begin with, the, the, we we got to understand that COVID has disrupted every other aspect of life, and that what is going to be post-COVID, if at all it comes, is going to be a different whole world or altogether. You know, you know restaurants, tourism, schools as we knew them have been have all been disrupted and everything seems to be on the highway of what we call the digital 
economy. And, and, and so therefore, what are those skills that we can enhance? For example, look at yourself. If you, if you have um, if been very active on any of the social media platforms, for example, what is going to be very, very important is for you to understand that your, your social media platform is your profile. What, do, what are you saying there? What, 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 what kind of posts do you make? What, what contribution, what ideas do you generate using that platform? And what kind of followership do you have? How do you turn it into a business? How do you turn it, turn it into, uh, uh, and, and that, that, that tells you, for me to understand, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm from the communication sector, and, 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 and com communications and digital media, you know, uh, are twins. And so therefore, I think the, the, the understanding that you people are sitting on gold by being on some of these platforms is, is the first thing to, 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 to understand. Because that means that you, you'll be able to understand that most of the businesses that are emerging out of, uh, if you read a lot, really, you will understand that most of the businesses that are emerging out of this crisis are looking for people who can do digital communications, who can do digital enhancement, who can do, do digital branding. And so that means then you, you need to look out for those skills. Where are they on the, on, on the digital space, for example? I don't know whether some of you probably have, probably have come, up, come across uh, an app called Canvas. I don't know whether Kishamaza, you know about it. Probably you do, since you've been in this space. Yes, you Canva. Know. Yes. This, this, where are these? You, you need to look for these skills that quickly help you to create something for someone who wants to promote their product. You know, people like, and I applaud them, people like Professor Maggie here and her team at, um, at, the, at the Investment Authority and, and, and of course, the, the entire government architecture have been encouraging uh, what we call value addition. And this value addition, wherever you go, you see everybody trying to create something. I, I'm very actually very much amazed. I was watching TV West last night and like, it's like every Munyankore is creating some drink, you know, and they call it any name. And so therefore, so, it's, it's, so I'm asking, and, and all, all, all of them are fighting for space on, uh, on TV, which is very expensive. But uh, do they understand that, that actually majority of Ugandan is 5.6 million eh, now hold smartphones and close to 4 million are now on social media, and uh, and like and, and that probably TikTok is the, is the, is the fastest growing. So where are these children? Where are you guys who are occupying these spaces? And 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 why are you not promoting Kazide, for example? Why are you not using a space of eight thousand followers to talk about to describe a product that I am engaged in? Why aren't you promoting Pepsi? Why aren't you you know for a five thousand for a ten k for that moment? Why aren't you doing these things? It is important. The, the reason is this that. We, we've not yet understood the opportunity that has come with that, and COVID has presented that opportunity. So for me, digital skills are very, very critical. We, 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 you cannot do without them. It is very important. It's like those, that time when we were being told without knowing something like word processing, or uh, you people may not understand that in our time, 20 years ago, you know, it was important to know like word processing and Excel. If you don't know these things, you cannot get a job. You know, so, so computer, 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 this computer, that became a necessity for anybody to, to, to have as an, as an additional skill on what they have already achieved probably at the degree level. Now, what is happening in post-COVID, it's no longer about your degrees now. It's about now what do people want to survive? People want to survive. They want to eat. They want to eat in a healthy way. They want to eat, survive. They want to fight COVID off. And so, and, and then they want information. They want somebody who can take them somewhere. So, so those digital communication skills are very, very critical in my view. And if we enhance them, uh, we'll be able to, 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 to live in the post-COVID situation. And so, and then finally, uh, don't discard this peer pressure uh, opportunity in my view, you know, and also learning to know where the next action is. For example, a platform like this is a very good platform for, for, for people to get to know how others are doing it. So always keep your ears out there. Who is solving what? How are they doing it? Let me ask Google. Let me ask uh, um, uh, YouTube. You know, how are people solving this? Ask these questions. Use these spaces. And 
then then you'll be able to understand what you're gonna need because at the, at the same time you just have to come and find a way of uh, of localizing that solution to what we need here especially in uganda by looking around what problems are people facing right now if it's lockdown what are the challenges how do you solve them and once you've identified those problems and listed them then you know the kind of skills that are needed but i think going forward uh we will need very very serious digital skills because everybody is now living on their phone everybody is living on their laptop and waiting for what kind of solution that can help them to survive probably the next one year or the next two years thank you very much our nightway um dr maggie your final remarks and your thoughts on the opportunities in the post-COVID era, the things that we can take advantage of, the sectors or the just different things we can take advantage of. Thank you. Oh, this has really hit everyone really, really hard. Um, we all needed to stop and rethink. We also all recognized that we, have you got friends? Have you got people uh, that you talk to? Have you, is your family with you? Uh, people have died alone in flats because nobody cares because you made yourself this, you know, very un-African person who does not care about family, some of you, uh, especially you, the young ones. But I think we've now recognized you need your family, you need people around you, you need your networks uh, more than ever now. Uh, secondly, uh, they've touched on the digital, but uh, just to mention that we recognized digital was going to be uh, very, very important. So I'm happy that you actually have it. We worked on it as Uganda Investment Authority, uh, Uganda Communications, you know, there was a lot of work behind what you don't see, what you now take for granted. You are connected. Sometimes we switch off, um, you know, social media and Everybody is panicking, uh, but uh, it is available and therefore it's an opportunity that you can now use as you've heard from Humphrey and, uh, and Regendo. Um, but also people must eat. Uh, Uganda is a very, very lucky country with the weather that we have, uh, the soils, everything that we have, the people. Um, it's very easy to grow things, uh, but we take it for granted. We do not use technology. Technology is not only in ICT. Technology is in agriculture. What seed are you planting? Have you looked at it? Is it the best that Kawanda is telling you that it's, it's a good seed? And when you plant this, you will have six times as much as your grandmother used to have. How are you planting it? So there is technology in agriculture, which is very, very important. Uh, the feeds, how are you balancing them? Are you just giving your chicken uh, um, you know, just a part of what they need so they don't actually grow. Um, so technology, not only for ICTs, although ICT also is very, very helpful in agriculture in that you can bank, there's e-banking, you can pay your taxes, there's e-tax, there, you know, there's e-everything, register e-everything is available. So for the generation that we are talking to now, you, the ones who are actually educated, um, you, you are very, very privileged. And I want you to think how you use that privilege. Otherwise, you, you will still find that the, the illiterate, you are so afraid of risk. As the educated, I think we, we look at risk and are not willing to take the next step because we can see what if that happens? What if there's another lockdown? What, you know, you're always asking questions. So take the first step, identify where you want to invest, get all the knowledge that you need about that. Are you an entrepreneur? If you're not, even that is on Google. You can do an entrepreneurship course, either on Google or Enterprise Uganda, make yourself a business person. And Bakash, we are here with you. I know that's what, those are the kinds of things that uh, I know you, you dream of finding for your people, for this particular audience that we are talking to now, are they able to run a business? How do you run a business? They probably don't know. So we need to do some work there. That should be one of your next uh, uh, sessions. 
uh, so that they can easily start a business and start it properly, understanding that they have a huge asset in themselves. You are the biggest asset that your business has. And looking at you, I'm looking at Miria here, looking at the people online today, you are huge assets. Recognize that. And then you can work and start your business and make it successful. Uh, so agriculture can become a successful business. Government is encouraging it. There's lots of opportunities. There's urban farming. Why are you buying the food you eat? Change this past palm that I'm looking at in my garden into you know, a vegetable garden. That, that's another thing that is available. You can learn it from KCCA. They do have uh, training in urban farming and examples so that you just look at it. So get the right seed, but it's not only agriculture. Some people don't think agriculture is cool. ICT is the other option. Tourism will come back. The tourists are actually here. They are 1,400 are here in Queen Elizabeth National Park as we speak. They are here. So tourism is a sector that will revive very quickly. Uh, health, health is a brilliant sector. What can you do in health now? Uh, people are looking to be accommodated. They want to run away from the family so they don't give it COVID. Maybe you can address that. All they need is rooms and then the doctor can come in to see them. So there are opportunities that COVID has also brought. How do you benefit from those? Uh, thank you, Maria. Marie. Wow, guys, thank you so much. This has been such an insightful session. Thank you very much to our panelists, Dr. Martin Chibuzi, Mr. Arunai Kurjendo, and um, Mr. Humphrey Nagumanya. It has been so, so, so power packed, so impactful, so full of wisdom. I've learned so many things. We are going to open it up now to QA sessions from the <laughs> Q&A sessions from the audience. So if you have questions, what you can do is just raise your hand on Zoom. There's a little um, button thing that you press to raise your hand. I can see a few hands have already gone up. Just raise your hand using the Zoom option. If you raise your hand like this, I may not be able to see everyone. So we might miss you. So just um, raise your hands. I'll let a few people raise their hands and then we'll pick like that. And so what you will do is you unmute, you'll ask your question and then you mute yourself again. Um, I just think it bears repeating. My name is, I'm your host for today. I'm the moderator. My name is Marley Keisha Maza. I think everyone has struggled with my name. It's Marley um, Keisha Maza, if that's easier for you. I have been your host and moderator today, but I'm not closing, so let's keep it moving. Um, so I see a few hands up. So I'll begin with Derek Mugabe, because you put up your hand first. So you can just unmute yourself, ask your question, and then mute again. If it's directed to someone in particular, kindly let us know who it's directed to. Uh, thank you very much. Hopefully I'm clear. Yes, you are. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I, I don't want to pronounce your name because I may fall in the trap of mispronouncing it. Uh, but uh, a vote of thanks to uh, Bakash Foundation, Humphrey Nabimanya, Dr. Maji Shigozi, and the other gentleman pursuing a doctorate. Uh, well, I am Derek Mugabe. Exactly. I am Derek Mugabe. I'm a peer educator with Richard Hand Uganda, obviously, thanks to Humphrey. Um, my question is on education. Um, I am in my first year at university, but then uh, actually after joining Richard Hand, it was, I think, my breakthrough when I, I really found myself what I really wanted to be in, in life. But over the days, I've realized that I have more power in innovation. I am so much driven uh, to uh, business, like I'm really good at business rather than the course I'm doing, journalism, and I'm so against employment. Like I personally, I don't ever look at myself getting employed. But then the, the biggest problem is juggling uh, my business innovations, which I, I find so good and everybody I've pitched to, they really find them so good. And being that um, their future businesses, uh, according to the dynamics and projections. Uh, so it's so hard for me to juggle education the degree that society looks at, uh, I mean, society looks at as uh, a must have and also my business. So my question is, as um, people who are, I mean, the gentleman who is pursuing a, a PhD and then Dr. Maji Chigozi Humphreys, I graduate. So what, what would be your advice? Is it uh, first leaving business and then focusing on education? Because it's really hard to juggle. It's really hard to juggle. Or maybe uh, first get a day DR or two 
through and, and then first uh, make a breakthrough in business, then uh, do it again. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. So just to clarify, your question is, how, what is what, what's the way to go forward in terms of working, running a business and doing education? Should you leave one and pick the other or run the two of them together, right? Exactly. Okay, awesome. Um, I'd like to ask Dr. Maggie or Mr. Anaitwe to answer the question. I think Humphrey jumped off, he had another engagement. He might have already left. Okay, I can, yeah. uh, so I can go just, first. Um, I can go first? Okay. Okay. Um, okay, thank you. That's a beautiful question, uh, Derek Mugabe. In fact, Derek, you are in a similar position I was in when I was at, at university in 1997, is when I was in first year, 96, 97 when I was in first year at Makere. And, 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 and uh, I think most of you were not yet born. So I will enjoy the, the privilege of oh, knowing so much. <laughs> okay, uh, Derek, I was actually in a similar situation you are in. Why? Because uh, of my background. I'm not from a very, 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 very rich background. So I had to fend for myself throughout the time I was at the university. And so I did everything including digging at a professor's farm somewhere in, in, in Mithiana to be able to find some pocket money to help me at the university. You'll see this in my upcoming book. But uh, uh, so I did that, then uh, went and forced myself to become a waiter somewhere in, in Maki India at the Kalenda Rest House. There was a, it was a big hotel then. So I would walk on foot from Makere up to, up to um, uh, Maki India to, to just you know, serve as a waiter and then earn some 50,000 at the end of the month to be able to buy donuts. Uh, donuts were the in thing at the university at that time. So, and then I'll tell you something that happened because then you need to learn from that. Uh, because I was, I, I was having that rebellious attitude that I, have, that I see in you right now. And it's very good that you have it. It's very, very good. It's going to shape your, your way of thinking later on. And, and, and so I was like, you know, I will never get employed by anyone. I am going to create my own things, and now let me even start. And and so, but at, when I was moving towards third year, and because I would stay awake, you know, working in the hotel at night, up, you know, used to sleep late, so I started dozing in the lectures, and my grades started going down, and then I noticed. I said, "What? You know what? Uh, I think first of all, first things first." What if my dreams that I am into don't happen? What if something else happens to my dreams and, and uh, which I can't anticipate now, and then I can't look backwards to get that, that, that qualification? And now, like you see, like how COVID came, it was out of nowhere and jumped out of nowhere and disrupted everybody. People have lost businesses, businesses have closed down, and people have to have, have had to reimagine the world and rethink others have committed suicide. So there are certain vagaries of nature, uh, Derek, you will never anticipate. The moment you have something, the, the English have a saying, uh, one bird in the hands is worth two in the bush. First protect that that you have. So here I am calling for juggling. You must juggle because you still have the energy. Don't just say, I cannot handle two things at the You must do it. There's no question about it. If you don't do it, uh, Ecologically, you will be aged out of the system. <laughs> so therefore, I think the most important is have a purpose of life. You set out to say, I must get a good grade because you need it. Without that good grade, you will not be able to stand here and start saying the things some of us are saying. We are saying these things because we have built a profile along the way. Part of it is because of the grades that we've been earning academically. So I think get that degree. I mean, concentrate on it and then time yourself properly because I don't think you are spending 24 hours on that degree. It's not possible. Be, allocate time for your dream because it is important to dream now. Members, I need to tell you all of you, don't waste time to start drinking, dreaming when you're past 40 like me. You know, certain things have come in, certain challenges have come in. I dreamed the red paper when I was just 22 years and, and, and I did not listen to my mother who, whom I told that I was going to resign from the moment she, she insisted and even she had to you know, strangle me literally. And I said, no, me, I am. And it's because of the energy that was in my chest to, 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 you know, to go and try, try out something and prove a point. 
So that energy is very good that you are exhibiting. And I think if you're in first year, I suspect you're about 20 or 21 there. So, so it's very, very good. These are the, that's the time when you need to dream big. It is important. Write your dreams down. Mm? Keep refining your project. Ask someone who has ever done it. We are here, we can always help, you know. And, and, and so, you, you know, and then if, you, if, if you've already started doing it and exacting it somewhere, do take baby steps. You have a lot of time ahead. Don't start thinking like you want to become like a Maggie Jigos at this age. It's not possible. Maggie Jigos has become what she is because she's, she, she, she has a lot of decades working at something. And, and those decades started somewhere at your age. So you start doing baby steps. Allocate probably like 20% to that dream or 20 or 30%, but 70% to, to, to your degree. It is important for me. And um, don't tell me that you cannot juggle. You must juggle. This world is not for those who are faint hearted. It is for the courageous. You must be very courageous and use that energy when you still have it. You have that advantage of energy, of radicalism, of, re, of rebellion. It is really within your head. I can see it. Use it. Use it. You, you still have that energy. It is, it is, it's not yet destroyed by alcohol, by drugs, by peer pressure, by other things, other influences that I cannot talk about here. You, you, you use it. And you're in a good company. You know. You know, Humphrey Humphrey has mentored very many young people. That that is that is a good company. That is, it it it, it, make, it makes sure you are not wasting time. It, you are not wasting time in useless things. So that means you you you, might have, you it means you have a lot of time for the degree, but also to think about your idea. I don't know what the idea it, it, it what idea it is, but if you have thought about it at this stage at this age, please leave it. I mean, leave it as an L I V E. Hmm? Leave that idea very well, and and, and 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 read around it. See how to make better, make it better. But importantly, create the problem within that idea. What the problem? Is, what problem is it? And within that idea that you, you are solving, how unique is your idea? Are you copying someone else, or you are standing out to be very unique from the rest? When we were coming, there was a moment a new vision, and we set out. We said we cannot look like them. We look different, and. Because of that, we've survived for 20 years. So, 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 so it's been a 20 year journey. So don't try to set, set out, say, ah, ah, I won't be like Regendo immediately. And that's what is killing so many young people and then they get frustrated with their dreams that they have. That age, by the way, is so, so innocent. 21, 22, 19, 20, 21, 22. You look at them 70. These are examples for me I want to quote. Kagame, all these fellows, you know, at 20, I think around yeah. 26, you know, Museven was already thinking about how to rule Uganda, you know, and, and started working around it by the steps and also making sure he finishes his degree. So those are the things that you can you can do. Yeah. Please so juggle, you, please juggle. You are meaning that he should juggle and he can do both of them at the same time. Yes, it is possible. It is possible yeah. when you plan your time very well. Okay. So Derek, you have heard it, <laughs> that it is possible. You can do it, you can juggle, you'll be able to manage doing both the things at the same time, just set aside time, plan, organize, and you'll be able to manage. Um, I think there's another question, so I'll ask Comfort to unmute herself and then Dr. Mark answer that question. Um, so Comfort, if you're still there, you can just unmute yourself, ask your question, and then mute again. Thank you, Mr. Rudolf, for your submissions. Okay, um, thank you so much, Mali. Um, all protocol, all protocol observed. And thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Um, Comfort Ahumuza, I'm a digital marketer. Um, I work with the Bakash Media Foundation and Premier Advertising Limited. So my question, my first question is, um, given, given the pandemic since last year to now, that has gotten so very many people to think about side hustles outside their main hustles yeah and oftentimes you'll find yourself um giving uh, giving your side hustle uh, sorry your main hustle more time than your side hustle and then when you, when you begin to give your side hustle more time you're going to now fail at your main job so as as asking um dr magichi gozi or the other panelist, how do you go? How do you go about that? Personally, I do groceries. I do grocery shopping for people, and and uh, besides 
I, I won't say that I'm not performing at my main hustle, like my main job. So while I'm performing there, but I mean, with time, like when I just started the business, I find myself having to get money, money, money that I'm supposed to, I, to be saving, money from my main hustle, using it to, to finance the side hustle, which is not okay. I think you're supposed to, to go around your, your financial discipline there somewhere. somewhere. So I wanted the, pan, the panelists to talk about that because I mean very many people. In the Uganda, we have today, people cannot live only on their main jobs because that's salary at the end of the month. But your side hustle somewhere, somehow, or most of them will bring for you money on a daily on a daily basis at least. Then second thing, still in this same pandemic, this same pandemic, um, a personal I've gotten an issue with people trying to steal, to steal. I mean, you see, let me see Pep, Peps has done a, a flyer about some promotion and then someone comes and gets that same flyer and tries to jug around with its logo or put a name of a different company, things like that. Now, most side hustles, personally, mine inclusive, is they are not legally registered, yeah? Because probably you're just starting and maybe you're looking, maybe in the future is when you'll do, you go into legal processes of going and just starting this business. So even when you want to come back at this person who is actually trying to steal what is yours, I mean, your, your small company, you can't even run after them because you have no legal, legal you've not gone through the legal process so how do we go about such such kind of things because you you find someone is already advertising a, a flyer or a poster online i mean social media is quite um a, a very small i don't say small country and i can explain but news travels so fast so somewhere somehow you the owner of this flyer are going to find it on someone's status or someone's twitter handle or instagram and they're advertising for their friends so when you ask oh who is one of this business they let you know and before you know it you, you do not know that whether you're, you're, the customers that you have are actually running to the other person thinking it could be you and all that thank you so much Um. Oh, sorry about that. Um, so your question, your two questions basically are about balancing between a main, your, a main job and a side job that you might have. And then your second question is how to protect your business from, from people copying and taking your ideas, right? Maybe Dr. Maggie, you could just address that. All right, thank you. Yes, comfort. Thank you for the question. And I'm really happy that uh, <clears throat> you are continuing with your main job. And uh, I just want to suggest that that you hold on to that one with both hands. You do be the best at it as much as you can so that the company or whoever it is uh, that's employing you will always want to have you. Uh, so make sure you're the best. You're the one who communicates. You are you're doing really, really well, you're on time. Even in this difficult time of COVID, you're doing your work at home maybe. So be very, very good. Your experiences in the side hustle now are the best thing for you. As you heard from Rujendo earlier, you, you learn on the job and that's what you're doing. You are recognizing that maybe I need to register this company. Uh, I might have side hustle you are recognizing it is giving me money. It is a good thing. Um, am I doing it the best way I can? You begin to think, can I do better? Can I use a different method? So you are thinking of your side hustle and that is as it should be. You should find those challenges um, that are happening to you now. That's a learning experience. We all learned on the job. We all failed. We did things wrong and, uh, and uh, uh, to get where we are. And for you, you are getting it, all that a great experience on the side hustle that you can even build, bring to your job now. And uh, because they probably are incurring, uh, you know, similar problems. It is excellent that you are looking at the side hustle and trying to make it work. And uh, so eventually, if it does really, really work, uh, then you, 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 you resign from your job. And as I always say, you resign in a good way. Leaving your job is not a good opportunity for you to say to your boss, 
I am so glad to believe in you. You're such an idiot. Bye. <laughs> you never know yeah. when you're going to come back. So leave politely. So yeah. You know, fine. I will now go. And do you need me for another month or two? I can still be here. So that's how you also leave the job. But right now, I encourage you to be the still be the best at your job, even as you are learning on the other one to be a very very good entrepreneur. That would be uh, what I would say to Campus today. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I see two hands, but we were supposed to finish at one. So I'm not sure how to help you. Wait, what you could do is maybe type your questions in the chat. And then I'll just ask our panelists to engage in the chat if they're able to. They can try and answer your question if, they, if it's possible, because our time is fast spent. As much as I'm enjoying this session, I know that we all have um, things to do, things to continue with. Um, we just need to continue and give our time because it's been two good hours. So um, I'd just like to ask Trevor and Maggie if you could, oh no, not Maggie, Trevor and the other person put down their hand. If you could just type your questions in the chat and then maybe if they're able to address them, they'll just chat back to you in the five minutes as we wrap up. Um, as we get ourselves ready to wrap up, although in response to your question, Comfort, I see something here in the chat. Someone is saying business reservation costs only 24,000. So you could just, con you could probably consider that. It's just go and get your business registered, book the name and register it so that you're registered under URSP. And then it will be easier for you to deal with the legal battles because you are actually recognized in the system. So maybe that's something that you could do from here. Um, let me know in the chat what things have stood out for you today from this conversation. Is there something that you're going to be able to actually apply, apply practically? Well, mouthful. Apply practically um, once you leave here, something that you can apply to your business, to your workspace. There's been so many things that we've learned today. So much has come out of this. I've learned so many things. You know, You have to be the person that adds value to every space that you enter. You have to be able to think on your feet. You need to be able to innovate, focus on the problem. When a problem arises, look at the problem and ask yourself practically, how can I solve this? And then go about solving it. So many things have been learned today. So just share with us in the comments in the chat section, what have you learned today? Something that you're going to apply practically to your life, your business, your career. So that we know that this has actually been a very practical session, not just learning, 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 taking in so much information and then it ends here. It should go beyond this space so that there can actually be proper impact from the lessons that we've learned today. So before we close, we have one more call that's going to pop up on your screen shortly. We would just like to get some feedback on how you found this session. We would like to understand better, you know, just to learn how we can serve you better and all of that. So we want to know how you found this session. And um, yeah, in terms of career, where you are, are you a student, a business owner, are you employed? Are you self-employed? Although we have people here that are both of those now, but you can just tick whichever one applies to you or maybe tick other. So the first thing is what is your career status? So you tick if it's student, business owner, employed, self-employed or other. We'd just like to know that. Um, then you let us know which career sector of the economy are you in? And then there's a long list of things over there. Um, <laughs> So you would tell us which career sector you belong to. Is it the legal sector? Are you in business and finance, health sciences, creative art and design, agriculture, literature and communications, technology and innovations, tourism and hospitality? If you feel like your sector hasn't been mentioned, then you can just select other. Um, that will be all. Then I wonder where do I fall? Ah, okay. Then the next question, the final question, question three, rate this session. We'd like to know if you are extremely dissatisfied, which I hope hasn't been the case, um, or if you were just dissatisfied or if it was ordinary, like me, I was okay. Were you satisfied? You feel like, yes, I, this has been really good. Were you fairly satisfied or have you been extremely, extremely satisfied? We'd like to know that information. So please just um, respond to that and let us know. Thank you very much for taking part in this session. Thank you for being a part of us. Thank you for joining us. If you joined the session late, or maybe if the network was funny and you kept jumping off and coming back on, or if you have someone you'd like to watch this session, it will be available on YouTube shortly on the Bakash Media Foundation page. So you just go to YouTube and search Bakash Media UG. 
there is a YouTube channel. I guess you can do all that fun stuff that YouTube has asked you to do, like subscribe, blah, blah, blah. And then you find the video as well, which you can be able to watch. So besides this call, you'll be able to watch it over and over again and share it with as many people as you'd like. So thank you very much for that. Um, I'm seeing a few questions, a few comments in the chat section. Thank you so much for the tremendous information. Thank you so much for sharing this much needed wisdom for such times. My take home is innovation and using the internet as much as I can to push my products and services. Yes, we must take advantage of the internet. Um, I have learned to Kule Mirako on what I have my mind on. Yes, Kule Mirako, Le Mirako, like stick to the thing, don't let go, don't give up. Thank you so much. Um, someone else is saying it's always an honor listening from the best. It's undeniably been an insightful session, but most importantly, Mr. Arinaitwe's answer to my question. Thanks. So yes, Mr. Arinaitwe, you answered Derek Mugabe's question and he feels, he's happier. It has been a lot better. Comforts, uh, Pe Maria Peggy, I thought it was Comfort, says, I've learned that I can do both my main job and my business and then to get legal ASAP and to use the internet as much as possible to market. Awesome. Someone else, Debbie Chirabo, you say your takeout is um, crisis enforces innovation. I should become innovative. There's so many Chirabos on this call. I love it. All right. Um, this was very educative. Thank you, organizers, moderator, and panelists. That's Ms. Chirabo, Michelle. Oh, Debbie Chirabo, I'm looking at the same Chirabos. Thank you, Chirabo and Chirabo. Um, Trevor's question is, what would you do if you are done with campus, you're trying to start something, but you have a rigid parent who doesn't support your business ideas with the claim of waiting for a job or connection somewhere? That's a very interesting question. Uh, maybe I'll ask one of the panelists to address it in half a minute. If you'd like to start a business, you're through with university, but your parents think that you should um, wait for a job or wait for a connection before you continue like to leave the whole business thing alone. That's, wow, very, very interesting. Oh, the answer is there in the chat. Um, our night to where gender is saying, sad state of affairs. God says we honor our parents, that is true. You can't do much about this. But listen, the internet, the digital world has made sure that we circumvent such rigid people who probably still think an analog. So digitize your idea. Your parent won't be able to know what you are doing. When it makes it to the top, he'll believe you. Do not kill your innovative mind. You can decide not to listen to him, but respectfully. So whatever happens, make sure that you're still honoring your parents and that you're still respecting them. So just find innovative ways of showing them that business can be good and business can be honorable and it can work. I think that's what you can do. And then it says, thank you to all the panelists. Mariah Peggy Nabunet says, thank you to all the panelists. This was very insightful. So thank you guys so much for taking part today. Thank you for being a part of this conversation. Trevor, I hope that helps. I think that's a useful um, answer. I think also what you can do is show them the value of the thing that you want to do. A quick story, I had a cousin who wanted to do film growing up. As children, she wanted to do film. She knew from a very young age that she wanted to get into film. And of course, typically African parents, that sounds like, what? No, you can't do that. So what she did is she managed to get a camera she borrowed a camera from somewhere and then one of those holidays she got all of us as the cousins we went to one house we were at my aunt's house and she scripted and shot a film and so we sat together as a family and watched the film together it was a very short film that she put together where all of us had acted and so from that her mom saw that she had passion for the thing and bought her her first camera and as they say the rest is history so if there's a very creative, interesting way that you can show your parents that the thing you want to do is good and you can make it work and you're passionate about it, I think that that will help. Um, yeah, you can follow us on Instagram, Bakash Media UG. Twitter, it's the same handle, Bakash Media UG. Even on YouTube, Bakash Media UG. Thank you so much for taking part in this conversation. We are so, so, so grateful that you could join us today. We are so grateful that you could be a part of this conversation. Um, yeah, you, the Career Essentials will also provide a platform, will also provide change makers with a space or a platform to tell their story about incredible work they do to change society. So if you have, if you believe you're a change maker in this society and you have, you know, things that you have done to impact your community positively, you can share those stories with us because we'd like to um, give you a platform and a space to talk about your, the things that you're doing, to talk about the stories, to share these things with us. So once again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of us today. 
Um, we will have another session next Thursday at the same time, 11 to 1 p.m. with some new people. You will see a post, watch out on your social media or however you heard about us today. You'll be able to see some new information next week, same time, 11 to 1 p.m. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Um, let's make this thing viral so we can have more people online next week. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Marley Keisha Maza. You can follow me on my social media platforms, Marley Keisha Maza on all my social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it's all the same. Um, thank you very much for being a part of us today. Thank you for engaging. Thank you for taking part, for sticking with us till the end, for asking questions, for sharing your thoughts. Thank you so much. It's been a great and impactful session, I believe. Um, from your comments, I can see that you've enjoyed it and it's been good. So thank you, thank you so much for taking part today. We look forward to seeing you again next Thursday with someone else, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Have yourselves a great day. Um, yeah, may your day be incredible. May God go before you, may it be a beautiful and incredible day. Joseph Kaposa says, thanks to the panelists. Have a blessed day. All right, thank you very much. We are through with the session. Have yourselves an incredible day. Goodbye. Bye.